That is a battle to keep an eye on between the two Forsetti cars, but so far... solid, it looks stable, <laughs> a fantastic effort from Fraser Fenwick, let's not forget, this is his first weekend in that car, he tested on Friday, he ran yesterday and was getting quicker all the time, and now, the Super Trofeo Lamborghini is once again threatening to get past Paul Bailey in the GT3 variant of the Lamborghini Huracan, the pair of the trio even, because let's not forget Richard Chamberlain up the road, the three all through Palmers accelerate now down towards Agostini. It's close between the two Lamborghinis. Is there going to be a lunge to the inside, possibly into the left-handed hairpin? No, not quite yet. They'll stay calm. Late apex taken by Paul Bailey, who's then able to open up the line on exit. He gets back on the power and is reeling in Richard Chamberlain, who's able to stretch his legs down that short straight to Hamilton. Clink through the left, get back on the power once more, spitting flames out the back as there's some lift-off fire for Richard Chamberlain. And that is maybe enough to just worry back Paul Bailey for a moment or two, who's quick in the twisty stuff, using the downforce of that GT3 Hurricane in GTO, hence why this position against Richard Chamberlain would be so, so valuable. Chris Murphy got damaged. last time around, went down by another one second, a 115.3. Into the pits has come uh, Chris Murphy in the 72. I did just pop into a garage and see on the uh, TV footage that there's quite significant damage on the front right, his front right, uh, of that uh, BMW. Now, I don't think that that was done in the first corner incident, so I think that must have been a new incident. That happens on the lap where he's come in there is what's happened there, okay. although I didn't see exactly where it's occurred. No, and it's... Uh, Quite a stove in there, sadly, on the uh, the front right there, and uh, yeah, it's, it's missing the uh, the front right. What, what happened? Okay. And that was just on that last lap then. No, that was the restart. Really? Okay. Sector is worth noting. So that was just a bit here and a bit there because there weren't 
did do a personal best, Townsend was just that much quicker up the road ahead. Down into Agostini once more for the trio that's battling for second overall. Mark Warren, sorry, Warren Gilbert, still pretty close to the rear of Paul Bailey. Closing in all the time, but not quite able to make an overtake stick. Took a lot of curve at the left of Hamilton, then it turned quite a bit used on the exit as well, but not enough to find a way through. the race at 153.8, enough to extend the gap fairly by a tenth of a second, but it says a lot that it's racing altogether, not quite able to set up the overtake quite yet. He's going to have to play the long game here. There's a quicker line through the first corner here for Fraser Fenway. Takes a meter line, but isn't able to contend with the mid-corner speed of that GT3 Hurricane up ahead anyway. So he's trying to keep it neat and tight. You wonder if the catalyst for the overtake will have to be a spot of rest by out ahead of these two. Chamberlain with his own personal best lap of the race again last time round to go eight tenths of a second quicker than the pair that were chasing him. But it wasn't enough to match the man out front. Richard Neary first into the sub 50 second laps. It's a 149.840. Decisive move if it presents itself, but is willing to take weight for that. 